Hi, this is Daniel, and uh, in today's video, I'm going to be designing a simple booklet based off of the isometric illustration I did in the last video. And uh, I'll be designing the book in InDesign. It's going to be really simple in structure. Uh, there's, uh, I'm not going to be using type, so there really isn't going to be any uh, layout design involved. Um, I'm just going to give it give the uh, the booklet a margin and uh, fit in the images that I created um, into the booklet. So um, it, it's it's basic. It's more of a simple setup, but um, I did design all the pages already, and I'm just going to show you how to um, create a library. Uh, so you can uh, use consistent colors throughout different uh, Adobe software. So in this case, I already created a library, but I'll just show you how, how you can do it. Um, you click create a new library and you can name it. I'll just give it a name ISO 2 because I already have ISO 1. And then what you do is you simply click on the plus sign and it's going to give you the option to uh, add the fill color. In this case, I'm using black and white, so I really don't need to create a library for um, a, a project like this. But when I'm using a more um, complicated color scheme, um, it's a good idea to create a library. Uh, and then what I would do is I, I'd create a group. I'll just name it group one for now. And then um, this is my second color. I'm going to add that and just drag that into the group. Um, and that's how you set up a library group. I just wanted to show, show you that really quick. And um, I'm going to move on to the InDesign interface and um, what I'm going to do is instead of using pikas, um, because this is a simple project, I'm just going to be using inches. Um, and then it's going to be a really simple eight page zine type booklet. And I'll just give it five columns. Um, I don't really need columns for this, but um, I th this is kind of my default setup, like a five column. Uh, page setup when I don't really know what I want to do or if it's fairly simple I'll, I'll use uh, I'll generally use five columns um, and then uh, I'm gonna keep the margin at 0.5 this seems like a good margin to have for a five inch booklet and the reason why I'm doing a five inch booklet is because I want to uh, bind this uh, magazine style uh, meaning I'm, I'm doing a saddle stitch bind with a stapler and um, I'm going to be printing it on um, letter size sheets. So I'll be doing that in the next video. Um, but because it's a five inch page, uh, I want to keep the margins at half at about half an inch. That looks pretty good to me. And I'll give it a slight bleed. So um, an eighth of an inch is going to be a pretty large bleed uh, considering the size of the page um, but anything smaller than this um, you might um, not get the full effect of having a bleed so uh, this is probably a, a good uh, amount of bleed to have uh, for most projects so I'll open the document and we have our pages uh, set up so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in the files. So I've already have them like organized and numbered. So I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to open them. And you can see that the cursor is loaded with eight images. Uh, you can see it in the parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply drag it to the margin. Uh, and that's what I want for now. This is the second image, and I'm going to simply drag and drop the images, and 
unload everything onto each page. The character, I'm actually going to resize. So, yeah, I'll get back to it in a bit. Yeah, we'll address uh, this character first. So what you do is um, you click uh, Command Option Shift and you can resize the link. That looks pretty good to me, um, so I'll leave it at that. And then um, I just want this character to be smaller. I want to center her, and uh, if you click on W, it's going to get rid of um, all the the columns and the bleed. Uh, you can see there's a, an outline or border, and um, for this image, I don't want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna simply crop it out with the frame. So I'm just gonna click uh, Option Shift, and um, I didn't resize the image itself. I just, uh, I just adjusted the size of the frame. So now we have um, all our pages set up, and what I want to do is I want to have a black background um, and what I can do is I can go to the original file and adjust the size but um, I actually like how it is right now and I'm just gonna simply add a background color to it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the library that I created and I'm just going to give it a fill color. It's going to be the exact same fill color. So what you want to be careful when you're working with black is just because um, they look the same on the screen doesn't mean they're necessarily the same color. So you can be using one type of black um, for your image file like I did here and then uh, you think you might think you're using the same black um, for the background but it can end up being different so that's why if you're using a richer black or if you're using a black that you um, you color picked um, it's always a good idea to um, save it into the library and using the exact same black so it doesn't have any separation. So on screen, you might not be able to tell, but <clears throat> when you print it, it might show. So it'll leave like an unwanted border or like a separation um, between the image itself and the background. So I'm gonna do the same thing with uh, the astronaut here. So I'm just gonna create a square and make sure you drag it out to the bleed. So when you cut the book, or you trim the book, um, it doesn't leave any ugly white borders or white edges. And I'm going to bring this to the back and we have our book all set. So I'm just going to show you guys how this looks in preview. And, uh, and this is what it's going to look like. So this is the front cover. This is the opening spread. And for the spreads, I I, I wanted the um, the half inch border. That was intentional. I thought about dragging it out and um, making the image flush, but I actually liked having this white frame. Um, I felt like it was more of a like it it, it visually felt like. Um, more of a story this way 
Um, it, it was a style choice in the end. And this is the main image. And then these are the final pages and this is the back cover. So I like what I was able to do there. And um, yeah, I'll be uh, printing this out in the next video. I'll, I'll show you guys how to paginate a saddle stitch uh, booklet and I'll go over the process of um, dual side printing and uh, paginating correctly and all of that stuff. So um, yeah, I hope this was helpful and um, I'm, I'm actually excited about uh, yeah, the outcome of this. I'll see you guys in the next video.